Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 218. O life that maketh all things new, the blooming earth, the thoughts of men, our pilgrim feet wet with thy dew, in gladness hither turn again. Hymn number 218. Scriptural this morning will be given by Wendy from Georgia. The Holy Bible, Proverbs. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. We will have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science Textbook.
our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know, as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, Truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 188. No eye hath seen, nor tongue declared, nor hath it entered heart of man to know what God hath here prepared for them that love and trust his plan. Hymn number 188.
welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. We begin each Sunday morning here at 10 o'clock with our roundtable discussion, and we had a really good one this morning. So if you missed it, please get it on our website, plainfieldcs.com. Every Sunday at 11, we have a Sunday school for children, and that is also conducted via a teleconference number for that purpose, so that any child anywhere in the world can attend just by dialing in on our teleconference number. And we have a testimony meeting every Wednesday evening at 8.15 p.m., where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives saved through the study and practice of Christian science. And we have a nursery available for all of our services and meetings for the very young ones. You can find us not only here in Plainfield, but also on our website, plainfieldcs.com. We have a channel on YouTube, and you can find us on SoundCloud and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And you can listen to our service either on our website or our YouTube channel, or from your telephone if you don't have internet access via a teleconference number that we provide for that service. And next Saturday morning, we will have another Bible study session. So please check the website for questions. And please join us next Saturday morning, 10 a.m. And there's an article that is being featured on our website that I would like to point out that cuts through a lot of questions about Christian science called The Simplicity of Metaphysical Practice by Peter V. Ross. Short, sweet, very helpful. And we've been doing a lot of printing and mailing this week. We have printed the magazine for January, Love is the Liberator, and put that in the mail to subscribers. We've also printed the February full text lesson sermon booklet and put that in the mail to subscribers. And we have printed the latest form highlights and sent that out to subscribers. So for those of you who receive these in the mail, you're gonna get them real soon. And I would also like to uh, mention for members, we will have our annual meeting of the membership this coming Thursday, January 24, at 8 p.m. Uh, all members are invited to come to Plainfield to, uh, to attend the meeting. If you can't, you are invited to dial in through our teleconference number for that purpose and join us for that meeting. That's Thursday, January 24, 8 p.m. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. Now we will have the reading of a testimony from Miscellaneous Writings, which attests to the healing power obtained by studying the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Jeffrey from New Jersey. Page 431, Miscellaneous Writings. Healing. Four years ago, I learned for the first time that there was a way to be healed through Christ. I had always been sick, but found no relief in drugs. Still, I thought that if the Bible was true, God could heal me. So, when my attention was called to Christian science, I had once bought Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, studied it, and began to improve in health. I seemed to see God so near and so dear, so different from the God I had been taught to fear. I studied alone, night and day, until I found I was healed, both physically and mentally. Then 
came a desire to tell everyone of this wonderful truth. I expected all to feel just as pleased as I did, but to my sorrow, none would believe. Some, it is true, took treatment and were helped, but went on in the old way without a word of thanks. But still I could not give up. I seemed to know that this was the way, and I had rather live it alone than to follow the crowd the other way. But as time passed, I had some good demonstrations of this love that is our life. I am the only scientist in Leroy as yet, but the good seed has been sown. And where the people once scoffed at this silly new idea, they are becoming interested, and many have been healed. Some are asking about it. One dear old lady and I study the Bible lessons every Tuesday afternoon. She came to call, and as we talked, she told me of her sickness of years standing and was healed during our talk so that she has never felt a touch of the old trouble since. One lady whom I had never seen was healed of consumption in six weeks treatment. She had not left her bed in four months and had been given up by many physicians. Mrs. Florence Williams, Leroy, Michigan. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page six of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, life. The golden text is from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The responsive reading, Psalms, Proverbs, and Colossians. Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. For whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily, as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Bruce will now read. I will read from the Bible, Psalms. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he hath set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Romans 
And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Ephesians. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Matthew. And Jesus went about all Galilee, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Acts. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phenis and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. The tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad, and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, Departed. First Corinthians. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge 
by the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Philippians Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Second Timothy, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Elizabeth from Georgia will now read. I will read from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God is the life or intelligence which forms and preserves the individuality and identity of animals as well as men. The divine ego or individuality is reflected in all spiritual individuality from the infinitesimal to the infinite. The understanding that life is God Spirit lengthens our days by strengthening our trust in the deathless reality of life, its almightiness and immortality. This faith relies upon an understood principle. This principle makes whole the diseased and brings out the enduring and harmonious phases of things. God is divine life, and life is no more confined to the forms which reflect it than substance is in its shadow. If life were in mortal man or material things, it would be subject to their limitations and would end in death. Life is mind, the creator reflected in his creations. If he dwelt within what he creates, God would not be reflected but absorbed, and the science of being 
would be forever lost through a mortal sense which falsely testifies to a beginning and an end. God expresses in man the infinite idea forever developing itself, broadening and rising higher and higher from a boundless basis. The infinite principle is reflected by the infinite idea and spiritual individuality but the material so-called senses have no cognizance of either principle or its idea. The human capacities are enlarged and perfected in proportion as humanity gains the true conception of man and God. Mortals have a very imperfect sense of the spiritual man and of the infinite range of his thought. To him belongs eternal life. Never born and never dying, it were impossible for man, under the government of God in eternal science, to fall from his high estate. The individuality of man is no less tangible because it is spiritual and because his life is not at the mercy of matter. The understanding of his spiritual individuality makes man more real, more formidable in truth, and enables him to conquer sin, disease, and death. This scientific sense of being, forsaking matter for spirit, by no means suggests man's absorption into deity and the loss of his identity but confers upon man enlarged individuality, a wider sphere of thought and action, a more expansive love, a higher and more permanent peace. A knowledge of the science of being develops the latent abilities and possibilities of man. It extends the atmosphere of thought, giving mortals access to broader and higher realms. It raises the thinker into his native air of insight and perspicacity. Spirit diversifies, classifies, and individualizes all thoughts, which are as eternal as the mind conceiving them. But the intelligence, existence, and continuity of all individuality remain in God, who is the divinely creative principle thereof. Spirit God gathers unformed thoughts into their proper channel and unfolds these thoughts, even as as he opens the petals of a holy purpose in order that the purpose may appear. Tones of the human mind may be different, but they should be concordant in order to blend properly. Unselfish ambition, noble life motives, and purity, these constituents of thought, mingling, constitute individually and collectively true happiness, strength, and permanence. One must fulfill one's mission without timidity or dissimulation. For to be well done, the work must be done unselfishly. Individuals are consistent who, watching and praying, can run and not be weary, walk and not faint, who gain good rapidly and hold their position or attain slowly and yield not to discouragement. When we wait patiently on God and seek truth righteously, He directs our path. We must reverse our feeble flutterings, our efforts to find life and truth in matter, 
and rise above the testimony of the material senses, above the mortal to the immortal idea of God. These clearer, higher views inspire the godlike man to reach the absolute center and circumference of his being. Job said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Mortals will echo Job's thought when the supposed pain and pleasure of matter cease to predominate. They will then drop the false estimate of life and happiness, of joy and sorrow, and attain the bliss of loving unselfishly, working patiently, and conquering all that is unlike God. A Christian scientist occupies the place at this period of which Jesus spoke to his disciples when he said, Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let us watch, work, and pray that this salt lose not its saltness and that this light be not hid, but radiate and glow into noontide glory. Man walks in the direction towards which he looks, and where his treasure is, there will his heart be also. If our hopes and affections are spiritual, they come from above, not from beneath, and they bear as of old the fruits of the Spirit. The purpose and motive to live aright can be gained now. This point one, you have started as you should. You have begun at the numeration table of Christian science, and nothing but wrong intention can hinder your advancement. Working and praying with true motives, your Father will open the way. We will now have a moment of silent prayer for our world. Let's now sing hymn number 324. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. 
hymn number 324.
Let's now sing hymn number 325. Take up thy cross, the Savior said, if thou wouldst my disciple be, thyself deny, the world forsake, and humbly follow after me. Hymn number 325. from the Christian Science Textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the Correlative Passages from 1 John 3rd Chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth, Matter is mortal error. Spirit is a real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. 